Home to more than 1.2 billion people and predicted to overtake China as the world's most populous state by 2025, India is a nation changing fast. Already home to the largest number of cattle of any country on earth, the importance and position of animals in India is also changing. A growing middle class demands more meat for its dinner plates, rising dog ownership is also clear to see and a desire to improve public health by tackling the stray dog population, which spreads rabies, all present big challenges for scientists with an interest in animal health, welfare and production. These subjects were discussed at a recent five-day conference in Bangalore, organised jointly by the University of Edinburgh's Royal Dick School of Veterinary Studies and the Roslyn Institute, along with the Commonwealth Veterinary Association. For Indian academics, the question is how best to improve husbandry techniques when conditions and systems vary widely across the country. The concept of typical farmer is quite, quite complex in India because there are multiple layers of farming systems. You may have in the state of Punjab a pers person having some 500 animals, but at the same time there are parts of India where the holding for the large animal is one or two. So it's, a, it's a quite a challenge. And we have to have multiple solutions for, to target to these different kind of multiple farming systems. One step towards achieving that aim came with the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between the Principal and Vice-Chancellor of Edinburgh, Professor Sir Timothy O'Shea, and the Commonwealth Vet Association. Any research which is being done in the University of Edinburgh, and it could be complemented here with our research scientists and if there's an exchange of personnel, exchange of students, it would be mutually beneficial to both of us. Academics from Edinburgh are already working closely with Indian partners, from tackling diseases like foot and mouth to improving the welfare of horses, mules and donkeys, which endure tough conditions amid the country's brick kilns. Professor Nat Warren, who heads the Jean Marshig International Centre for Animal Welfare at Edinburgh, travels regularly to India to see firsthand the challenges. Well, animal welfare is an extremely emotive subject and often people find images such as the ones that um, we see in the brick kilns in India and the stray dogs on the streets, I find that very distressing. As scientists, it's up to us to really try to bring a more objective approach to how we assess the welfare of those animals and also look at ways that we can improve welfare at the same time as recognising that um, animals are important to humans and animal welfare also impacts on human welfare. What we're doing is we're working closely with our Indian colleagues um, in, in the various different professions to um, enable them to use the expertise that we've developed over many years here in Edinburgh both in the research side of things but also in education so that they can um, themselves look for the improvements that I know that they want in animal welfare in India. Other scientists at Edinburgh like Professor Bruce Whitelaw are working with Indian colleagues to develop cutting-edge techniques to use genetic engineering to tackle diseases and improve production. So could such technology provide India with the food security it craves? India is a huge country with a huge population. It has a huge productivity potential within its agriculture which is not being met. I think early on we want to see some very simple changes to some aspects of, of agriculture in India that could have a huge impact. Genetic engineering will not be in that phase. Going forward though, a country as ambitious and with the potential that India has should be abreast, at least abreast to the technology and being involved in its development. And some early studies which we hope to do in Hyderabad will contribute to that positioning for India. How it's used and when it's used is up to a society and various societies around the world. But for some diseases where we do not have current vaccines, where we do not have current drugs and there's no foreseeable breakthroughs, then genetic engineering may offer an alternative that's at the very least is worth exploring. Edinburgh is also using its expertise in exotic animal husbandry to work with partners in India to help protect and nurture the country's wildlife. Well obviously India is renowned for its fantastic wildlife um, but also for critically endangered species such as the tigers so there's obviously problems there as well and what we're finding is that the veterinary training in India really focuses mainly on 
livestock and domestic animals. And the Indian veterinary profession has very little training in wildlife and conservation. So we're using our knowledge and expertise to go over to India and help train vets to get specific skills in conservation techniques so that they can help understand these complex issues between wildlife, domestic animal health and also human health. Edinburgh's work in non-veterinary disciplines also featured, with the principal discussing future projects with a range of institutions. Our relationship with the National Centre for Biological Sciences in Bangalore, uh, that is deepening and we're doing more collaborative work there and I had the great honour of opening a laboratory for the National Centre for Brain Repair uh, where our scientists uh, will work with Indian scientists. The conference ended with a dazzling display of traditional Indian dance, expertly performed by local children. Time also for older members of the audience who studied at Edinburgh to reconnect with the university. Edinburgh Vet School is one of the world's best veterinary schools and uh, the university is rated 17th in the world and you will never get a better education than in Edinburgh. I'm very proud to be a graduate of Edinburgh and uh, I think Indian students should make use of their talent and expertise, particularly veterinary students, to go to Edinburgh. More information on the University of Edinburgh's Roslyn Institute and the Royal Dick School of Veterinary Studies can be found on the website. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.